singing in the kitchen. Family. Running through the yard. Family. All in this together. Family. We're taking a chance. Family. Like birds of a feather. Family. Kick off the shoes and dance.
Radios at 98.1. 98.1. Well, good morning, this cool, crisp morning, <coughs> October the 4th, 2020. For us, a lot of things going on this year. This certainly is one of them. This is the Lord's Day. Let us rejoice in it. Welcome to the King's Terrace Church of Christ live streaming services, 2031 East 30th Street from the parking lot and the street, Caroline, as we present to you our worship service this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father, our God, and certainly thank you, Father, for blessing each one of us with another day, another day on this side of eternity, Father. And Father, now we ask a blessing on our worship service, Lord. We thank you for holding off the weather, Father, as we present the word this morning. The word is going to glorify the end of the body, and a word is able to save our souls. Thank you, Father, in your son, in Jesus' name, we pray. Let's all stay. Amen. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we get ready to lift up our voice <coughs> and praise as our song leader, Brother Dexter Smith, comes forward to lead us in our praise. Brother Smith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, say 
come to you today and we thank you. We actually thank you for this rain because we need it here. We thank you for being able to come here today and be together as brothers and sisters, your children, at your church. 
God, we ask you now that you would be with our, mess, our pastor, our minister, and allow him to touch our hearts and our souls with the word that comes your word. Father God, please take care of our government. Bring us back to reality. Bring us back to common sense. Bring us back to the country that's supposed to be. Lord, be with those that are in the region. Be with those who are in the region. For in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. At this time, we come forth to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 20, uh, third verse and follow. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was portrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same matter also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Our precious Father in heaven, we thank you for your great sacrifice. Jesus Christ, he shed his blood and gave up his body for us, Heavenly Father. Now, Father, we ask that you would clean our minds and open our hearts, dear Lord, that we will remember the great sacrifice, that we will not forget but that we will also be in tune with you and each other, Heavenly Father, as we do this. Thank you again for all you do and all you've done for us. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and ask for all things. Amen. Thank you for all the blood, blood. since the beginning and if this is our opportunity to give back to him a portion of what he so bountifully blessed us with I'm going to read some scriptures here from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 beginning at verse 6 
out of the New Living Translation. Remember these words. Take them to heart. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly. And don't give in response to pressure. God loves a person who freely gives. Pray with me, please. Lord God, we approach your throne this day. Thank you for allowing us to see it and allowing us to enjoy it. Please accept this meager gift that we give you today to do the things that you have directed us to do at this place at this time. May it be used efficiently and effectively for your purpose. We ask these for us blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.
you, man. If you're still out there, go ahead and hook those horns and let us know. That's good. That's good. It's truly, again, despite of the weather, uh, we are still blessed uh, that we are still able to gather together and give God praise and give Him glory. And it's so good that despite of what's going on, we are still alive here because many times we will get up and go to work, even when it's snowing and it's doing all kinds of things. So we know that you are to your to your master, and that is the Father in heaven. And it's great to be loyal to Him because we always get people loyal to, and then they always feel what they get. Yeah. May be good, and that may be a little jealousy, but we know that we're always our Amen. 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 Outside. We thank God for this opportunity to praise Him and to worship on this wonderful and this beautiful day. He has blessed us and kept us in His care, and I pray that you're appreciating all the goodness, the grace, and the mercy that God has extended to you on this day. We do want to begin with a brief word of prayer. Uh, we're a thank on behalf of the Hankerson family. There will be a memorial service today on behalf of uh, Ahmad Hankerson. We're praying for them and for that family. We ask you to keep them in your prayers as of the service prepared uh, for today. Also for the Henry family, in light of the loss of uh, Brother Sister Henry's son, we pray for them uh, in light of the service anticipated this coming Wednesday for them as well. Keep these families in your prayers as you pray with them and for them. Would you join me together for a moment of prayer? Most merciful, gracious, and loving Father, we thank you for your peace that you extend each day 
It is you who love us and know us better than ourselves. We thank you for this chance to share a word and to experience the love that you've given us. We ask you to bless these families which are going through the loss of a loved one, of a child. Father, we thank you for how you've kept them together for these years and the time they had together. We ask you to give them the peace that passes all understanding as you mold the midst of this even pain they feel right now. Thank you for your love and your kindness, your extended grace, mercy, and peace. And we ask you to be with them as they face the days, weeks, months, and years that are ahead. We thank you for your care and thank you for in advance for how you're going to give them all they need, even right now, in the midst of this challenge. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. I pray that God is blessing on this day. I want to share some important news with you. Of course, we're out here today in this beautiful, great weather. On today, on next Sunday, on the 11th, we'll also move here outside again. Uh, and then the last two Sundays of October, we'll spend back in our facility using our Facebook service. However, I do want to let you know that beginning the 1st of November, November the 1st, we'll begin having service back inside of our building the 1st of November. Amen. Amen. So, we've been encouraging you to uh, call ahead of time and RSVP so that we'll have expectation of seeing you in our services. Uh, it will begin on November the 1st, 7.30 and 10 o'clock service. I uh, ask you to call ahead of time to reserve a space and also encourage you to make sure that uh, as you come out on those Sundays, let us know ahead of time. But uh, encourage you many as can to come to this 7.30 service so we don't have a compilation of people at one time trying to keep everybody safe and protected as best that we can. Amen. I know God will bless you as we anticipate this chance together. I do also want to men uh, mention to you something very important, a schedule for 2021. Uh, I want to emphasize the women's, we're going to be hosting a 2021 Women's Empowerment Conference November the 5th to the 7th. Now right now, ladies, registration is only $100, $99 uh, until the end of this month. And the theme is from pain to purpose. Uh, dynamic speakers have already been lined up for this powerful program. They'll be kicking things off with a bootacular, a bootacular sale that you don't want to miss for $99. And so they encourage you, the expense will go up for the conference. For the conference is November, the, uh, the month of November 5th through the 7th of 2021. So right now you can sign up and get set up for that. Look forward to knowing that you did that. I know God will bless you as you anticipate this Women's Empowerment Conference hosted here uh, in Indianapolis uh, in November of 2021. So, amen, get your reservation side up as soon as you can, get a good seat and a good spot. Amen. Do find me Philippians chapter 1 and the verses number 6 in your copy of the Word of God. I have a, a word we'll share with you on this day. I know we'll bless you and God will use you for something great and purposeful inside your life. The verse we're looking at Acts is one verse, just verse number six. I want you to know what Paul says in, over in, in, in Philippians 1 and the verse is number six. He says with these words, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm confident that he who began a good work in you will bring it unto its completion. As we look at this this uh, pericope of text, I invite you to consider the idea that you need a next steam flip. You need a next, next steam flip. As a child, I can remember being in elementary school and, and, my, and the most important moments of my day were three, day, three times in school. Those times were called recess, lunch, uh, and 3 p.m. Recess, lunch, uh, and 3 p.m. Because I knew that no matter how much I loved the class or did not like the class, how well I was doing or how badly I was doing, I was full assurance that I had the opportunity of a recess, a lunch, at 3 p.m. For 10 years, I worked at Deal Gibbridge Chemical Plant in Southeast Texas. And when I worked there at the plant for those many years, there were days I had to work inside uh, with a jackhammer breaking up hard polymer with a mask on in the heat over 100 degrees inside with gas and fumes all around. At times I'd have to water blast inside these cubicles uh, that had this hard polymer inside of it uh, with 9,000 pounds of pressure cutting polymer, pushing sometimes 11 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. I can, I can even recall at times 
when I did that, I knew even at the worst moments of that job, there was going to be a recess, a break, a lunchtime, and a little and the o'clock in the morning when I would get off. I can even recall when I went to college and began studying in school and, and sometimes sitting in a, in a classroom with a professor who seems to me like he was going on and on and on for hours and I can recall getting tired and getting exhausted my mind beginning to slip <laughs> and fall off but I remember there was going to be a moment for a recess a moment for a lunch and a moment that I was going to be getting off and those things kept me inspired and motivated research has been done to identify that sometimes gamblers who are addicted to gambling they were asked to do something, to ask them, can you pick out a future experience, something inside of the future that you can look at and look forward to, and they identified when gamblers who are addicted to gambling can find an event or an activity inside their future to look forward to, they were able to offset the impulse to gamble at that moment because they live in expectation of something else going to happen inside their future. This powerful concept that we're talking about is a simple concept that we practice each and every day of our lives because this concept connects with us in many kinds of ways. When you talk about I'm living for the weekend, it's the same kind of idea. When you talk about taking a vacation or taking about taking a break for lunch on your job or talking about the idea of doing something special, going on a special date, whatever it might be, the sense of next thing, if you will, is what we always practice. It allows us to feel like no, no matter that no matter what we're facing, what we're going through, is something that we can be overpowered by and empowered by. We actually call it something else. We don't typically call it next thing. We actually call it anticipation. Anticipation. Anticipation is the capacity to face a situation, be fully aware that all I'm facing is not going to hold on in the way it is right now. Do you know? the power of anticipation do you know that it is anticipation that gets you through most days most weeks and most nights it's the idea of believing that no matter what i'm facing right now what i'm going through right now my whole life is not bound as far of this one experience there's something more there's something bigger there's something greater that's ahead and i live my life in expectation of what's going to come next if the believer for the believer nothing is as encouraging as being aware that as much as I face in my life, I've got the assurance of knowing that this too shall pass. No matter what I'm going through, what I'm facing, this is a moment in my life. It's a moment in my time. And what I'm going through right now is not going to destroy me. It's going to make me for something better. It lays the foundation in the mind of a child of God that no matter what spiritual defeats I have, I've got the assurance of knowing that if I just hold on, I'll discover there's more that's ahead. I want you to realize, therefore, that when you present, when your present, when your present right now feels frustrating and annoying and intolerable, even a pandemic has you locked down and your old normal has become a new kind of abnormal where you don't know how to think and how to function, where anticipation is what gets you through your moment and through your life right now. Even Paul, you find him being very optimistic in this text as he talks about his future and talks about the future of what lays ahead. However, I want you to know you, how do you make decisions in life and not get depressed and not get upset because trouble happens inside your world. Things can happen that can make you feel bad about today and feel bad about tomorrow. So how do you not get depressed, upset, and mad or frustrated when your heart is broken? And you sit around moping. Crying, crying. You mean, you been thinking about dying? Well, before you do something drastic, I want you to dig this. Anticipation is that thing that you do that gets you past where you are. But I'm really not talking about personal anticipation. See, anticipation got Paul through his challenge, but it wasn't the anticipation for Paul's life. My, my great-grandparents had to live with some form of anticipation that no matter how bad things were for them, it would be better for their children. When my parents had to live their lives with an anticipation that no matter what turmoil they faced, what struggles they had to go through, how they were mistreated, and the world they lived in, they had to live their lives with a form of, of a flip anticipation, not looking at their own lives, but looking at the lives of others. You see, anticipation 
when his foot allows you to face the challenge of life, I want you to see why the Apostle Paul can find himself locked up inside of a prison, and while locked up in prison, he can live optimistically, he can see the world from a different perspective, it's because he knew how to flip his anticipation and not look at his own life and look at his own self and look at his own challenge. Just his shape inside of a prison. Life looks like there's nothing ahead. Matter of fact, he says in the first chapter that I don't know if I'm going to even survive this situation. He says in verse 21, for me to live is Christ to die. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because from Paul's perspective, I just may die in this situation. But I want you to understand something. That when you learn the value of pouring your life into somebody else and life gets crazy and life goes bad, you can have the capacity to say, no matter what happens in my life, I know there's something greater for somebody else. No matter what life may bring, I, I live my life with an anxious anticipation for what can happen in the life of my children, in the life of my grandkids, and the life of the world that I'm living in. I'm living my life with expectation that there's more to take place and more to happen than what I'm facing right now. And when you learn the power and the value of living your life with an expectation and anticipation that there's more to life than what you're facing right now, there's more to life than what you're going through, Paul knew how to be locked up in prison and live his life to the lives of somebody else. Right now, the reason you don't have the joy that you should have. Maybe right now the reason you feel the pain and hurt you feel inside your life. Maybe right now the reason that with all the turmoil around us you sit in frustration and don't know how to think this thing through. Maybe it's because you got to learn the power of living your life not looking at your life, but learn the power of living your life looking at the life that God allows you to pour yourself into. Because when you learn to pour your life into the life of others, you'll discover that God is doing something that you didn't even think. Looking inside this text, I want you to see how Paul flipped his anticipation. He didn't talk about how bad things were for him, and he, he didn't talk about how rough his life was at the time. He didn't talk about, I just can't wait to get out of jail. Paul said, let me tell you something. I am confident, he said. So look inside this new verse, the lesson is going to be yours. First of all, Paul writes, I am confident. When life has you in a place when you cannot see the good of your situation, you must be able to see how God has put you where you are for a reason. From prison walls, Paul is able to think of the Philippians and focus on what God is doing in their lives. What God has taken them through and what God will put them. He's able to focus Without, without any any reservation on the power that God has inside their life. He said, I am confident, which means I am convinced. I have no doubt at all that the God who began something inside you, people would tend to believe and to live up to your expectations of them. When you tell your child all the time, that's the bad one over there. So that, that child's always in trouble. When you tell somebody, you're never going to lose any weight. When you tell somebody, you're never going to get it together. When you tell someone, you're broken with the way that you are. You're the bad child. You're the troublemaker. You're the one who never gets it together. I want you to realize people will either live up to your high expectations or they will live up to your low expectations of them. There's a challenge inside of our minds. You must be able to see and be able to express the idea, I am confident. I, I know that people inside your life sometimes have turmoil when you see them. And sometimes it's your family. Sometimes it's your friends. Sometimes it's your loved ones. Sometimes it's somebody inside your world that you look at them and you declare, I can't see anything good coming out of you. But Paul begins by actually saying, I am confident. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Of a doubt. You must be able to be confident about the people you have access to. Everybody has what we call an oikos. An oikos is the Greek word for the idea of your household. Your oikos in your household consists of five groups inside your life. It's your friends, it's your relatives, it's your acquaintances, it's your neighbors, and it's your enemies. These are the five groups of people who God has given you. He suggests the idea that you should be able to look at all these people and declare, I believe that God has began something inside you, and I believe it's going to take place. There has to be inside of you a sense of confidence. But Paul says something beyond that. He said, I'm confident of the God who began to bring it to completion. I am confident of the beginning 
and I'm confident of, of the end. These two Greek words are interesting words to see because the actual two words were initially used in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the worship that would take place among a Greek sacrifice actually to idols. And those two words were interesting because what would happen for the sacrifice to idols, they would take a torch and light a torch up and put a bowl of water there. They would take the torch and put the torch on the bowl of water. And when the torch hit the bowl of water, they considered the water therefore to be sanctified or be some kind of purified or clean. They would take the bowl itself and sprinkle the water on themselves and sprinkle the water all around themselves so that it made them a complete person prepared in a condition that they actually could pray to their God and talk to their God. What well, Paul is saying by using this term, he's telling them, but the God who began inside you will bring it to completion. In the same sense, it suggests the idea, the God who you serve, I believe Paul said, the God you serve will take a hold of you. He will modify you. He will mold you. I believe he will make you all of his. You've got to learn the power of living your life with an expectation of things getting better, with an expectation of life having the upside, and not always seeing the downside of what happens in life. You must learn the power of being confident. You must be Learn the power of being confident of the God who had a beginning and has an ending to what he's trying to achieve. But thirdly, you must learn the power of the confidence of realizing that I am confident of God's work. That's what Paul says. I am confident of the work that God is trying to do. I, I declare to you, even as a preacher, as a counselor, when I meet with people, there's some folks that begin to get with them. I look at them and I scratch my head too. I say, I don't know how God's going to work with you. You've got some heavy issues inside your life. As I see you, I'm aware that there's a weight upon your shoulder. Sometimes because somebody molested you as a child. Sometimes because who's actually abusive to you inside your family. Sometimes it's because a relative inside your home, somebody did you wrong. Folks in the community talked about you. They put you down. And sometimes the perception of yourself, your view of you is so destroyed and so distraught that as you get into the Lord, you feel like and the world seems like I can't win. I can't victor over the battles I've had to face. But I want you to realize, as Paul says inside this text, I am confident of God's work. It's the realization I'm confident of the work that God is doing inside of somebody else. Yes, I've seen some people and I can declare, oh, you look weak right now. You look like you're stuck right now. Fuck, you're not going to pull it together right now. I may stand back and declare, I can't see what God is trying to do in you and through you, but I am confident that this is God's work. And because it's God's work, what God's trying to do inside you, like God never fails on the job he's trying to do. And that, what I love about how God sees things, the Bible says Jesus, he met, he met Simon or Cephas. He named him Peter, which is, is pebble or, or rock. He calls him a rock. Well, if you look at Peter, I don't see rock potential in Peter. One more is telling Jesus, don't wash my feet. And the next one says, Jesus, wash me all over. One more Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the very same conversation, he comes back later and Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. You find Peter, or one moment, he's a man who's a cussing fisherman. And the next moment, he's a fisherman of men bring him to Jesus. He's a man full of contradictions. But Jesus sees a man who basically moves back and forth like a reed and calls the man a rock. Because Jesus sees Peter, he does not see Peter as Peter is. He sees Peter as what Peter can be caught. He basically tells Peter, I see rock potential in you. Peter, you may not look like no rock to nobody else. You may not talk like no rock to anybody else. But when I look at you and I see you, I see the potential that you have. You must be able to see others and see what God is trying to do to change and modify their lives. Same thing is found. You find the book of John. John inside the Bible. John is the one who talks about love more than anybody else in the Gospels. But however, be aware that when Jesus was saying to the apostles, we want to go through Samaria to get to, to Jerusalem on our way there, the Bible tells us that John and James, the two brothers, called the sons of Fuck for a reason. The Bible says those two brothers actually said to Jesus, can we pray? Can you pray that fire from heaven will come and destroy the Samaritans because they said we can't pass through there? The very same men, the same men who had the idea of let's pray to kill some people is the one the Bible says 
who talks about love more than anybody else. He's called the one that Jesus loves because I want you to realize he saw love potential in John. Even John couldn't see love inside himself. He saw a power and might and strength of rock capacity inside of Peter. When Peter and nobody else could see the strength inside of Peter. And by the same token, when we look at each other, it's essential that you look at people and declare, I can see the God who began a good work will achieve his goal in your life. Friend, I want you to understand that when you learn the power of trusting in God and learn the power of depending upon God, you realize that I am confident of God's work. And last but not least, friend, I want you to know you should be confident that God completes what God begins. Paul said to the church in Philippi, I am confident the one who began this work will bring it to completion. That's key to understand, God does not start something that God can't finish. He lets you inside of his family. He's got a job he's going to achieve. This is not about confidence in them. It's about confidence in God. It's a confidence in God's miss, of the godness of God who can take a person and take a situation and modify them and mold them. It's the part, it's the confidence and assurance that God, who sees you where you are, can move you where you are to where he wants you to be. It's not Paul's confidence in himself and what he's talking. It's not his confidence in the people who in Philippi. It's his confidence is the very God who let you be born. The very God who lets you live where you are. The very God who gave you access to the people who are inside your life. The very God who saw you at the midst of your challenges. The very God who saw you in your days of pain and crying. The very God who saw every moment in your life that seemed like disappointment. The very God who knows how sometimes, even right now, when you look inside the mirror, you feel broken and you feel torn and you don't see an answer. That very God looks at you right now and declares my child, I want you to know that what you're going through, it's not going to break you, it's going to make you, it's going to put you into a place where God can take you and achieve a great and powerful might. Don't give up on yourself and by all means, don't you dare give up on God. He has begun a work in you and it's the church in Philippi He'll bring it to completion. But Paul says, I'm locked up right now. Ain't nothing I can do but my situation. But what gives me encouragement, what gives me strength, is that realization. I've been to the hospital beds. I recall being by hospital beds where some people were up in age, in their 80s or even their 90s, and laying there. And we're aware the families all gathered together. We're looking there. We're aware, we're aware that time is coming near to an end. And that, 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 that grandmother, that great-grandmother laying there inside the bed looking at her children and looking at her grandkids and looking at her grandkids in the midst of the awareness that her own life is coming to an end, lays there and begins to smile. Because she believes the work that I started a long time ago is not going to end because my life is ending. And if you learn the power of finding people to have access to and pour yourself into someone else and put yourself into someone else and pour into them the very gifts that God poured into you. You'll discover in all that God allows you to do that when your days are rough and the pain feels heavy and you look around and don't know where to turn, you'll be aware that the power and the might and the gift of your life was never about you, never about what you went through, or never about your challenges. It's always been about how God took you. With all your weaknesses, with all your shortcomings, with all your frustrations, how God took you with all the brokenness with all the things about you that make no sense to achieve anything powerful, how God took you and did a mighty work because you learned the power of pouring yourself into someone who's going to achieve something for his purpose. Friend, you've got to live a life with the confidence. So I want to challenge you. Think about the people inside your world. Think about your flame, your, your oikos, your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, your neighbors, your enemies. I want you to think about those people. I want you to contemplate what are you going to do to pour into them. Stop speaking death. 
Jesus' life. Talk about how it's never going to be coming to you. be like, you know, good day. We would love anything. We'd be just like him. Love the power of seeing the value of pulling something of significance into somebody. So at the end of your days, life goes forward with the blessing that God had called you to pour. Friend, I, I don't know what your life has been going through. I don't know what complications have beat outside your door, but I do know this, that the God who began a good work in you will bring it to its completion. And what's the completion preacher? One, it's a work. It's a work. God is trying to do a work in you. It's not a sleep in you. It's not a, it's not a vacation in you. It's not a, a rest in you. It's the God who's trying to achieve a good work in you. And the work connects you to the purpose of God. The work connects you to the church of God. You can't become the person that God has called you to be if you're not working inside the kingdom of God for the purpose of God, for the good of God. And when you do that, friend, you'll discover the reason he has you here. That that good work will bring you to completion and what's the completion preacher at the end of your days and at the end of your life you'll spend an eternity in the presence of the one who lets you be here you right now friend you've got to learn the value and the power of investing in somebody to bless them make them powerful and to make them great once you make that decision i want you to know for that to happen if would have changed. If, you, if you're not a part of the family of God, if you're not a part of God's family, the first thing has to happen, friend, you can't do it like you are. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, to achieve this goal, we've got to get rid of you. Bless your heart. We've got to get rid of you. What does that mean, preacher? That means you got to die. you got to die. you got to die to who you are. Romans chapter 6 talks about this verse 3 and following. you got to die to who you were, die to your old life, and what we're going to do is bury you. The Bible says, he that believe it is baptized shall be saved. You hear the word of God like you this this morning. You have faith or belief. And what God has had to say, you have a change of mind. Luke 13, 3 to 5 tells you, unless I, you repent, you will perish. You have a change of mind to be different, to think different, to understand. My way has not worked. And make a confident decision. I'm going to confess my belief that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God. Upon that confession, I'm willing to be baptized. I'm going to die to our world and come alive to become the child God wants me to be, to become. All things shall become new on this very day. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We'll assist you. All you got to do, call us, text us, send us a message. We'll assist you in finding someone, if you're not inside their city, to get with you and help you become added to the family of God. If you're not a Christian, I want to invite you and challenge you to make the decision right now. But if you're part of the family of God, Look around your life. Who are you pouring yourself into? You can't have this experience unless somehow you get out of you and get into blessing someone else. And when you do that, you can say, I am confident that the God who is working you will bring that to completion. Let's go to God together for a word of prayer. Most loving, merciful, and gracious Father, the God of all creation, in your majesty you have seen us, in your loving mercy you've cared for us. You see us with our strengths, our weaknesses, and our shortcomings. In the midst of all that you see, you love us. You love us, you care for us, you watch us stumble, you watch us fall, you, you, you allow us to face challenges that will mold us and make us greater and make us more powerful. You allow us to put our trust inside of you. And Father God, we thank you all. Thank you that you love us enough to trust us, to pour us with our weaknesses and our shortcomings, to pour us into the lives of others, that we can also, with our lives, find ourselves in hurt and pain when our backs are against the wall. When we, we don't know which way to turn, to have the assurance of knowing that you work in us so we can work in others. And when we work inside of others, we give you glory, give you honor, and identify the power of a real God who affects the lives of others. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your peace. Thank you for how much you love us, that with all our feebleness, you trust us to do a great, great work of helping others to discover the power that you give. May we learn the significance of not trying to destroy and tear down others, but seeing the gift of life and your image inside of them. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your confidence in us 
to achieve something far better and more important than even our own lives. And now, in the name of the God who calms all waters, in the name of the God who calms every sea, in the name of the one who can speak a world into existence with just a word, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for tuning in with us on this day. Again, I remind you, if you're out of our city on next Sunday, we'll meet outside again. Beautiful, brisk weather. The rain already stopped. Isn't God good already? We're so thankful. Amen. Amen. We want to encourage you to be free next Sunday. Come on out and be with us on the last two segments month we point out services as we make sure uh, on on the on our on our on the Facebook page as we make sure our facilities are ready for you. And again if you come in please call our office and reserve your spot so we know that we got you coming in. It's on at seven thirty or ten o'clock beginning November the first. Be back inside of our building looking forward to spending a chance with you that God can empower you, that God can keep you, and we can be of service to you in any kind of a way we do encourage you to make a contact with us. Send us a message to May God bless you, give you power, give you might, and give you strength. May God hold you always in the palm of his hand. Be blessed. Now I can do that.